friends, it is very nice to see you, a few of you in church and the majority at home. But wherever we are, we are together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also so with you. you. Now friends, this is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Christmas is almost coming. And because of this special event, together with Janneke, I will light the candles. The candle of joy. Mary, the mother of her, of her and our Lord Jesus. May your hearts be filled with joy as you hear the song of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Last Sunday we lit the candles of hope, peace and love. Today we light a fourth candle of Advent, the candle of joy, as we remember the joy of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Luke 1. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he has made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, merciful and gentle. To you be praise and glory forever. Your light has shone in our darkened world through the childbearing of Blessed Mary. Grant that we, who have seen your glory, may daily be renewed in your image and prepared like her for the coming of your Son, who is the Lord and our Saviour of all. Blessed be God forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed, blessed is Mary, mother of Jesus, and blessed is the fruit of her womb, the source of everlasting joy, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Alleluia. And now we will together sing hymn 219, How Lovely on the Mountains. We will sing the first and the fourth verse. Together, pray the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now hear the blessings of our Lord for those people who follow him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Wonderful blessings promised to us, but the preconditions are steep. Who of us is perfect? None of us. That is why we need to confess our sins every day, every week. And when the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness. And he will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us now confess our sins. Come, let us return to the Lord. And together we say, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mercy. And for those who have confessed their sins from the bottom of their heart, I can now say, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we pray the collect for this Sunday. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We will now listen to, the, to Freek Withaar playing the hymn 552, When Our God Came to Earth. From the Old Testament, 2 Samuel 7, verse 1 to 11, 16. Now, when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See, now I am living in a house of cedar, where the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind. 
for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent, in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read the Song of Mary, her Song of Praise, the Magnificent. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those in humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers to Abraham and to his offspring forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The reading from the epistles, Romans 16, verse 25 to the end. Now, to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. And now we will together sing hymn 467, Tell Out My Soul.
reading of the Holy Gospel today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. Hallelujah, hallelujah, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Hallelujah. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, for this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We will now listen to a sermon by Reverend Dorinke. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary knew her scriptures. When she burst into song after Elizabeth's greeting, she was not composing it on the spot. Her song echoes the song of Hannah after the birth of Samuel. It is an individual song of praise, but even more, it is a way of connecting with the praises of others in the long history of God's people. And many others have followed her example by reflecting in turn on her song, the Magnificat. Over the centuries, so many people have been inspired by this text and have responded to it in a variety of ways. Today we will listen to and look at a few of these responses. One of them has been written by me, and I'm not going to tell you which one. The others, well, by other people. As you listen and look, take the time to note your response. Which words or phrases do resonate with you? What are you thinking or feeling? What would you like to say? to the artist or the author, or to the Mary that they present to you. I hope you will all take away something from this listening exercise, and maybe feel encouraged to write your own Magnificat in the days to come. A contemporary rewording. I sense the greatness of God, who makes my joy complete. God smiled at me and asked my help, and everyone will dance with glee at the wonderful thing happening to me. What a God! In every age, God aids the good, upsetting the plans of the arrogant. See how the powerful fall of their purchase. Honour for the modest, a banquet for the hungry. The rich get nothing and slink away. God keeps promises to friends and companions. Abraham, Sarah and their like today. We now turn to the image. Fill the hungry. Lift the lowly. Send the rich away, cast down the mighty. 
Take a close look at this Mary. Do you like her? Or does she disturb you? And why would that be? Look at the details. Can you find references to other parts of scripture? And what does this Mary say to you? And what would you like to say to her? An unfolding of the Magnificat. My soul body swells with love of my creator. Joy fires my heart for my lover, my God. My beloved has noticed me and loved me, a nobody from among the powerless poor. From this time to the end of days, all generations will call me blessed. For love has drawn me from the shadows. Wonderful indeed is the name of our God. Your loving kindness embraces those who are all struck with wonder and love, held in eternity's moment in time. Your gentleness has shown great strength. The proud have been scattered in the fantasies and deceits of their minds. Those drunk with imperial power have fallen from their arrogant thrones. The dispossessed on the scrap heap have been empowered, one with another. The homeless and the hungry have been fed with their share of the harvest. The greedy who hold on to their wealth have seen it all crumble and vanish. Just and compassionate God, giving a new name to the deprived and invisible, you fulfill your covenants of promise. Long ago, you gave Abraham your blessing, and to Sarah, both faithful and true. Your love reaches every generation, to the earth's little people, forever. Now is the blessing renewed. I give you my heartfelt thanks with eyes that are shining with love, with the presence gestating within me. The Magnificat of the Mystic. My soul is a wellspring of praise, my spirit soars liberated and free. For the Lord chose me for his humble abode, and now his own heartbeat is resounding in my womb, where I carry the essence of all things, life forever unfolding. Blessed am I, made holy and whole by the withinness of God, his love longing at the core of my being. Rejoice with me, all you that are hearing my story, for again the Lord will do the impossible, proving the holiness of his name. Broken hearts will be made whole. The weak and the vulnerable will, will show forth his strength. He will shatter our pride and frustrate all our ego games, leaving us empty and hollow, fertile and receptive. Then he waits for our yes, a yes that will change us and the world, a yes by which we receive and lovingly nurture and give birth to the Christ, embodying love for a universe ever expanding. Never again will we doubt his promise of life that is of old and will endure for all eternity. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen.
let us together speak to God and to one another and express our faith with the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. And Chris van Dusseldorp will now, from his home, lead us into our intercessions. So please pray along. Let us pray. And the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Emmanuel, we are so thankful that you are with us. And especially now, during this Christmas season, we, we are all affected by the needed corona regulations in order to protect us all. And we thank you that despite our present circumstances, that through your Son, Jesus Christ, we are united with all our loved ones, and whether nearby or far away, and whether alive or passed away. And we thank you that especially when we feel sad and lonely, that you are very near us. And even though we're not always feeling and experiencing it. And we thank you, Father, that because we experientially know that you sent your Son to our world, because he wanted a loving and enduring relationship with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we firstly want to thank you for our spiritual leaders, Bishop Robert and David, and Archdeacon Paul Froelich, our area dean, Ruin Crew, our chaplain, Jos Strengholt, and our curate, Dorinke de Vries, and also all our other volunteer reverends, Adrian, Jelle, and Jaap. And Father, we feel truly richly blessed with all of them. However, only when we are all participating and all contributing in our own unique ways are we truly church. And Father, especially during this time with Christmas and Corona, help us all to take our place. Father, we pray that each member of your church will be a source of light, life, love and hope. And Father, we pray together that especially those who are alone, those that have no families, those that have currently no physical access to their families, that they will find comfort and refuge in you. And Father, we pray also that we will stay aware in the here and the now of your presence, focusing on you, who are Jehovah Shalom, trusting that you will not leave us or forsake us, and that you will be good to us despite our circumstances. Receptive and also unhurried for what you want to give us. And Father, we pray that even more so in times like these, that your Son Jesus Christ will soon come again to bring peace on the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we pray for our local church, the chaplaincy Arnhem Nijmegen. The current regulations doesn't make it any easier for us who are not able to have their family around for Christmas. Father in heaven, as we as local church stand firm in solidarity with all those people who work so hard in the health sector 
It also means at the same time that some of us might suffer loneliness, will miss their routines, or may otherwise feel deprived. And will you warm and strengthen their hearts with your love? Father, we pray that in the coming time, more than ever before, we will look after each other with all kinds of creative ways, like visiting and praying and cooking, calling and celebrating Holy Communion with each other. Father, we pray that by doing so, that our relationships will grow stronger instead of weaker through all of our acts of love and kindness this coming season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we remember that Jesus, your Son, came as Savior of the world, who came in weakness amidst animals in the manger, we pray for our creation. Even as you used the star as a sign of the coming birth of our Savior. And we pray that the wise man and woman will see, through your creation, your invisible qualities, your eternal power and divine nature. That they will see it clearly through what you have made, and that they will acknowledge you as creator and Lord of all. Help us all to look after your creation more carefully this coming year. Father in heaven, we pray also for every political leader and representatives, especially for our Prime Minister and Minister de Jong, and for the Cabinet. We thank you for the efforts serving our country. Father, we pray, grant them wisdom and courage in this difficult and uncertain pandemic time. We pray especially for Queen Elizabeth and for King Willem Alexander. We pray that they will be pointers through the earthly office as Queen and King to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own city, for peace and prosperity. It has recently been shaken up by murder incidents and by accidents where people died. And we thank you that when it grows darker, that your light shines brighter. And we pray that your light will pierce the darkness, that your light will conquer fear and anxiety, loneliness, sickness, death, bankruptcy, job loss and other kinds of difficulty of the residents of our city. And we pray that your saints and many who carry love within them will be your light bearers to those who need comfort of your light this Christmas season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray, Father in heaven, for the communion of the saints, those who believe in Jesus, your Son, and confess his name. And we pray that the communion of the saints will grow stronger in enduring love that conquers fear despite circumstances of war, of the COVID-19 pandemic, hunger, plague or other threats. A living testimony to the fact that Christ has come. And Father, we finally pray for all who are sick and suffering in our midst who are affected by those who are sick and suffering and are limited to be present because of the current corona rules. And we pray that you help us all to deal with our pain and our grief, to find comfort in you and also in each other. We bring our loved ones before you right now and we pray for your healing power to touch their lives. And just take a further moment to do that right now. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, Chris, for those intercessions. It is time for the peace now. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death 
and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. It's also with you. And let us now greet one another with a sign of peace. Well, that is a bit tricky when you are at home and I am here, but the peace of the Lord be with you at home or wherever you are. And usually this is time for the offering in our liturgy. Well, there is, you can do that by bank if you like. Uh, the church is empty, so there's not much harvest here. Uh, please think of your church, make your payment through the bank. And actually, you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by, your poverty, by his poverty you might become rich. We are rich people. And as the grain, once scattered in the fields, and the grapes, once dispersed on the hillside, are now reunited on this Eucharistic table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. We will now listen to the singing of one verse of hymn 103, Crown Him with Many Crowns. The Lord is here. His the Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. He is the one foretold by all the prophets, whom the Virgin Mother bore with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist was his herald and made him known when at last he came. In his love, Christ fills us with joy as we prepare to celebrate his birth, so that when he comes again, he may find us watching in prayer, our hearts filled with wonder and praise. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. 
Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest. This our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. To you be glory and praise forever, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And as our Savior taught us, we now together pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink your remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him. And that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Sadly, because you are at home, you cannot participate physically in this eating and drinking of the body and blood of Christ. But don't forget, the body and blood of Christ means his presence. And his presence is with you wherever you are. He is the bread of life, even in your living room, even in your private life. So don't be desperate. Come back to church when you can again. But for now, enjoy Christ in the, in, with his presence in your own house. Let us pray together the prayer after communion. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your promised Savior, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let me announce, pronounce the blessing for you at home, and for us here in church. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you wherever you are and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.